All right, in this episode, we predict how hard Alex is throwing and how to get torsion and keep a linear force vector. Porcio, Bob Wheatley, and maybe Stephen Godani. He might jump in here. Maybe. The at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch Tip Show, where you go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and I can never it's say close. Snapchat. Snapchat. And Snapchat. We're on it. Right. And uh, you asked your question. Anything on pitching? Anything on baseball? Anything? We're open to. Uh, we're going to answer on the show. I've been having great questions. We got Bob Wheatley here, minor league pitcher. Stephen Godani here, up and running the show. <laughs> making it rain. <laughs> okay, we're making it rain now. Now this show, the rating is just gonna fall apart. You're killing us. <laughs> After the last episode. Gotta bring some making it rain in here. We have to. We gotta right. start every show like that. Make we it just rain. make it rain at the very beginning. All right. All right. So here goes our question for the day. Alex Brown asks, I am six feet two oh five, power clean two thirty five, bench press two seventy five, back squat four twenty five. How hard should I be throwing? Also, I can clean two thirty five with a belt, two oh five without is that bad? That's a that's a that's a challenge, uh, Alex. Um, you know, when someone asks that, I like I love to see those numbers, and I can get a good assessment. Six foot, two hundred five, two thirty five. I mean, your clean is um, decent. It's decent. What's that power to weight? Not even one point three. What's his weight? I'm sorry. Two hundred five to two thirty five. Oh, yeah. Your power to weight still everyone under one point three, uh, which to me is the beginning. At six foot though, you got to be a one point five guy. So that's one point five. Um, 115. 115. 115. 115. Yeah, so only 115 power to weight ratio. So I'd say you're low 80s, maybe, if you had really good mechanics. Um, but it looks like you might be a little thick. You might be struggling with some mobility issues. You know, I don't know. I'd say low 80s, if you're lucky, mid 80s. That's where you look like to me. And you say you're cleaning 235 with a belt. Um, with a belt, it's two, uh, 205. No, without a belt. No. Mm -hmm. Clean 235 with a. With a belt, 205 without is, oh, without a belt. Okay. Yeah. So, um, without a belt. So, what's the belt do? The belt can um, stabilize your core a little better. So, obviously, Olympic lifts are huge core dominant lifts. So, it's just giving you more core stability. So, it's just showing you, you probably aren't working the core routine. If you're in the program, I think you are. Uh, you're probably not crushing the core routine. If it's not enough, we can give you more. So, that could help. Um, oh, do maybe, core. I'd like to know your front squat. Maybe your front squat's weak. Front squat is going to be a lot more core dominant than your back squat. And then, how low is that back squat? I'd like to know that. I, I have a feeling your back squat's not that low, um, which would give you more hips there. Um, so here's the thing. Not, I can only say so much with that. I still don't see the technique on the lifts. I don't see the mobility in your body. I don't see the technique on the mound. So there's a lot of things I'm not looking at. So I'm kind of shooting in the dark, but I'll give you low 80s. Um, tell me if I'm right or wrong. I don't know, you want to add anything to that or go on to the next question? Uh, I would just say also with the uh, the belt, it, I'm kind of thinking that it could mean like the two things. Yes, your, your core collapsing on uh, when you catch it, taking the eccentric loads, but also I hope you're not uh, swinging it and like using it to help brace your core. Right, and the, is, and the issues we have with swinging technically with the bar is you're going to be more back dominant. Yeah. And we're trying to build leg power with the cleans. That's why we do them. Um, so I'd like to know your vertical jump. Your vertical jump is 25 inches, then you know that 235 clean is a lot of back. Yep. Talk about what you've um, found in all this. Like, what's a good combination for you? Just give them some markers you think you need to get to to get your ball speed where you want to go. What are some key markers you're looking for? In the weight room? Anywhere. Bird. Weight room, jumping, running. Well, I mean, I think what, his back squat is like 425 or something. 75. Four, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a No, 425. Well, uh, well, I was going to say he's 425. squatting 475. 425, two, Either two way, that, that, that's a ton of weight. And uh, as someone, uh, I'm 6'5", but uh, I am technically a strength guy, or at least that what, that's what I was when I showed up here. And that doesn't really translate to the mound. So your 425 back squat, that's awesome. That's a good foundation for uh, building power but you need to be able to translate that into speed on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm doing the same thing. 
because uh, in the end, you don't. It doesn't matter how strong you are in the mound. You have to be fast. So yeah, and to put that into a picture is if my front foot lands, I typically have 0.1, 0.2 second, mm -hmm. two tenths of a second to release the ball. So if I'm hitting 250 percent of my body weight, say I've got the back squat strength to stop that force, meaning like that the amount of weight hitting there, I can squat it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when you squat, you take what a in a full second or more to do the lift, maybe probably more. Longer than that. Probably yeah, longer yeah. than that. Especially with that much squat. weight. Yeah. yeah, with that much weight, probably a couple of seconds, three right. seconds. Uh, so there's the thing. You can handle that weight in two, three seconds. We need to handle it in 0.2 tenths of a second. So right. that's where power comes in. Right. The ability to, to take the, the load and activate the motor units for that load in two tenths of a second. That's the difference between strength and power. Right, but the fact that you can squat for 425, not a lot of people can say that. That's a great foundation in order to build power. You if, much it, rather, if it's low. Sure, yeah, assuming you get good depth and you know it's a clean lift. But I'd much rather squat 425 and build power from it than squat 225 and I have to get strong enough and then I build power. So you're. You're, you're on your way, you just gotta make sure it's fast. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You know, there's certain things we look for coming in order. We look for the strength to go up, then we look for the speed to come in and builds the power. Then we wanna make sure on the other aspects, we got the mobility, so we can put the body with that speed and power through the movements. And then we've got the, the motor control in the mound, so we know to get into those positions, the timing to get in those positions, the sequence of those positions, and that we're using it athletically to move the force up the chain. Yeah. Wait, he was, he's 205 pounds, and he's squatting 425, mm -hmm. and he's power cleaning two, 235. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, you def, definitely sounding like a guy who, uh, it, you got your back squat up around two times your body weight. Hopefully it's low, getting low like they're saying. Uh, but if you are getting low and uh, getting low enough, it definitely does sound like you're the type of guy who's got a lot of strength that maybe needs to start learning how to tap into some of that strength uh, and uh, getting faster and uh, stuff like the Olympic lifts, plyometrics. Uh, uh, the med ball, uh, the dynamic med ball drills, those stuff with like pure speed is, uh, could really help you out. And as a guy that's six feet tall, comparing yourself to me at 6'5", I have longer levers than you. So if we move at the exact same speeds, and, I'm gonna throw harder mobility. than you. And mobility. And mobility. If we are like literally mirror images of each other, I'm gonna throw harder than you just because I have longer levers. That's just physics. Like. That's, there, there's a reason why in NASCAR or in track, you wanna be on the inside lane because it's a shorter distance. So if people are like, I think of it like when I'm on an uh, on-ramp on a freeway and if I'm driving alongside a car and we're like, you know, hand in hand, the car that's in the outside lane is driving faster, even though you wouldn't guess that because you're staring at the guy the whole time. But he's traveling a longer distance in this in the same uh arc i guess so that's that's levers you on the inside lane as a six footer me on the outside lane as a six five guy i'd be driving faster because i have longer levers i'm moving on a bigger arc so you you just have to move faster that's that's the benefit of being taller but also if I mean, really, if you don't move fast, it doesn't even matter. And so. in, in seeing a 1.11 power to weight ratio, that doesn't tell me you're moving that you're fast. Moving fast. I mean, compared to most, you're doing good, but it's compared to an elite athlete, you know, someone like Bob, who's in the elite range, you're not moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> good question. Next question. El Caballete asks, how do you get a linear force vector without losing torsion? Okay, I want to bring Bob in on this because he's actually working on this right now. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'll make it quick. I think I've actually talked about this before, but my force vector drills, torsion drills, force vector torsion drills are great to help and teach it. But basically you lift, you fall through the hips initially forward and down at the same rate. The goal is as that is happening, you still have to balance and stabilize on your, on your drive leg. You just want to make sure that knee stays out. So a little counter rotation could help and put that into torsion. Torsion is a twisting force and we want it to go externally. In, in rotation, not in like a, a hinge, just in rotation, the femur turning externally, the kneecap rolling out, that's torsion. So we wanna hold that and build torsion as we fall forward and down at the same rate. And we don't want it, the kneecap to go internally. So you'll see a little delayed kneecap following the front hip, but it still will follow the farther your hip pushes out and you do need to cover some good distances. But tell them what's some of the challenges you're having working for that. Talk about your mobility restrictions and how it makes it more challenging and all that. The question was just how do you do it? 
Yeah. Like, okay. How do you? Work yeah, Brent. Through? Brent covered the motor coordination of it, the actual mechanics. Uh, I'll get into the mobility demands. For me, I came in here, and Brent. Brent can attest to this. I came in uh, Thanksgiving, my senior year of college, two years ago now, and my hips were terrible. I mean, he didn't think I'd ever come back. Like they were, they were that bad. <laughs> And they, they've gotten significantly better, yeah. but I still have some restrictions there. So when you're in a low position and you want to drive out of that position, you put so much demand or you demand so much of your hip, your hip capsule, uh, your, your adductors, adductors. And those are some areas that I really need to clean up mobility wise. Uh, I say right now I'm about, you know, in, in the middle. But do I want to be a pitcher that's in the middle? No. I mean, I... If I want to demand elite performance out of my body, I'm going to need elite mobility because these positions that the guys, whether it's Chapman or whoever else is throwing the hardest uh, in the game, the positions that they put their body in, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. It's, it's really cool to see that they can get there and then power themselves out of it. So for me, I need to open up my hip capsule, my adductor and stuff like that just so I can get in those positions. And that's stuff that we work on every day. Yeah, and um, but he does have the challenge because when that hip capsule, when you get to the end of that hip capsule, when you find the end of that range, it wants to go the other way. I mean, it's like, okay, I can't go any farther this way. Let's start going that way, and that's because mm -hmm. that's where you're going. So basically, as you're pushing into torsion and you're loading your hips forward and you're stretching that adductor, um, you hit the end of that hip capsule, and it's going to want to go the other way. It's going to collapse and drive. So the problem is like with Bob is that is still happening a little early. So how do we get more? We've actually got to the point where we've hit the end of his hip capsule and we still weren't linear enough mm -hmm. there. And what we're doing now is trying to put the hips in a better position, <clears throat> a little counter rotation, which should give him more room in that hip cop capsule, a little more, uh, less uh, posterior pelvic tilt, a little more anterior tilt, mm -hmm. should give it more range. Um, and we're doing that. It's, so it's like, you know, it's, 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 he's so much really challenged with what he has. He doesn't have a lot of room there. But, it, I mean, you'll find a way, guys. You can find a way. You just got to understand the body. Coming down here to the 3X Velocity Camp, when we evaluate you, we're going to help you understand your body. Mm -hmm. And we can work around stuff like that. Because to tell you the truth, that's why Bob's here. You look at Bob. Everybody's like, well, why was Bob down here? You look at he's 6'5". He's athletic. You know, played at a great college, USC. Why did he have to come down here? It's because there's something that was restricting him that – he couldn't figure out where he was and no coaches could figure that out yeah and he came down here and we showed him and he went home and he was like oh, well that that makes sense and then he came back and then he started working on it and then he saw success with it and now he gets it right at this point i mean that's pretty much the progression of all this yeah i mean uh when i got here i was i was looking for answers why am i six five and i can't even break 90 what's the deal i should be throwing harder than this give me some answers and that's that's what i got here whether it was through uh, your biomechanics, seeing how I moved uh, frame by frame compared to the guys that I want to be like, or the mobility screen. Uh, at USC, they put us through the, the FMS, the functional movement screen. It's like a, I think it's a seven movement test. You're graded up from zero to three. Uh, I've done that in the minors a number of times as well, but that's just a, such a baseline test. It can't really show you your specific uh, inefficiencies so when I showed up here Brent told me well you need some more internal rotation of the hip you need some more trunk rotation you need some more external rotation Horizontal of the arm reduction. you need some more of this basically I was just tight everywhere so yeah, right. and when you're pitching you look at a guy like Tim Tim Lincecum he has great mobility and oh yeah it's a no-brainer that's why he throws so hard because he has such great mobility well it's it doesn't work just for him it works for everybody you know, you need mobility in order to get into these positions. So, and I didn't know that before I came here. I, I took yoga in high school. Uh, I took it in college. You know, I just thought because I could touch my toes, I was flexible. When in reality, that, that's great that I can touch my toes, but it wasn't helping me throw 90. You know, I needed hip and turn rotation, trunk rotation, all this stuff. You needed and coming yeah. here, Brent was able to say, and it, it's not just guesswork. It's not like, oh, well, I think you need more. He could tell me, hey, you have 40 degrees of trunk rotation. That sucks. Here's where yeah. average is, and then here's where, you know, if elite would be. Right. And so I came here 
looking for answers and that's that's why I'm back I mean the the constant feedback because one thing that I hated was just the constant guesswork I want to throw harder and I don't know how to do it Brent told me how to do it yeah that's our saying here we don't guess we test mm -hmm. that's uh, our motto let's get don't guess we test because how do you get better guessing guys you just what happens at the end of your career you go shit oh, I curse now <laughs> I, shit I guess wrong now we just went PJ again. <laughs> I guess wrong, and that's definitely not something you want to hear at the end of your your career because you get that a lot. You know, dads come here and like, God, I wish I would have known that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's because we've been testing, measuring to to learn, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything wrong? Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, that's awesome point from both of them. That just no two athletes are the same. Everybody has their deficiencies, and if you don't know your deficiencies or what you need to work on, you're really falling behind the curve, and you'll never really meet meet your full potential. And I like each one of us have, has something that we need to work on specifically like Brent has his problems when he was getting to 90 that he had to get figured out uh, whether it be becoming faster mobility issues uh, getting more size etc cetera, etc cetera. Bob has his uh, his mobility issues and uh, uh, getting a little more power and stuff and myself I like just for an example like just the other day I, um, I, I kind of started to real uh, I have a, like a hip impingement here and my whole leg has always just felt messed up and then just rolling out I'd always been doing stretches and being like oh yeah this uh, mobility is gonna get it and then kind of reading the uh, supple leopard book I started really getting into um, uh, the myofascial release with the uh, foam rollers, just rolling it out and I feel it all start loosening up and finally I'm starting to get the hip impingement gone starting to feel full range of motion again and that's just kind of things that's where it's individual deficiencies that you really need to get figured out and that's why coming down and learning uh, about your athleticism and learning about your mobility issues and uh, the stuff you have to do to fix them and you, you see all of it and we put it in we, sh we, we like tell people this is what you need to start fixing and sometimes that road looks really like that you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel it looks overwhelming um but i like if you just work on these things it, it really pays off in the end all right cool thanks good question if you have a question go to twitter facebook instagram snapchat ask your question pitching tips baseball tips we answer on the show if you haven't already go to topflossy.net check out our programs see you next time yeah. oh, oh.